this video, we're gonna talk about one of the most common mistakes I see brand new wedding photographers make, and I'm gonna share a tip that will allow your images to look better throughout every single part of the wedding day. Hey there, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Caitlin. This is a place where we love to empower photographers to build both profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting you in to the behind the scenes of our day-to-day -day life. All right, so technically this video is for beginners, but really as I think about it, like this tip is for anybody. I sometimes have to remind myself 13 years in being a wedding photographer, I have to remind myself that this tip applies to me constantly. And so it's simple, it's easy, here it is. You find the good light, and you stay there. What does this mean and why is it so hard to grasp? Because we're creative people and we'll sometimes, especially new photographers, they get confused between pretty things and pretty light. Pretty things do not make good, good photos. Pretty light makes great photos. And a lot of times it's like we get distracted, we see something pretty, we run to it, we don't even take into consideration. Is that good light over there or is it just you know, a white gazebo that everyone says, take photos there, take photos there. Is it really pretty though? Is it in good light? If it's not, we shouldn't waste our time. This principle applies to every single part of the wedding day. I see photographers all the time that are like, well, Caitlin, like, I just can't get my detail shots to look so consistent. Well, that's because photographers are looking at a bridal suite and saying, oh, that's a pretty little hutch, or that's a pretty little ottoman, or I'm gonna use this countertop over here. And they, instead of finding one good spot with great light, they try to shoot all over the place. Same thing for the bride getting in her, in her dress. All you need is one little sliver of good light and a little decent backdrop and you do everything right there. And sometimes photographers who don't understand this concept, when a bride says to them, hey, I wanna use this in the bridal suite and this and this and this, and they give a whole list of all these pictures they want with pretty things, photographers don't have the confidence to say, you know, actually when I walk into the suite, and I'm saying this because this literally just happened to me a week ago, I got an email with about 15 different requests to use different parts of the bridal suite, and I know that not every part of that bridal suite is gonna be photogenic. So what I need to do and what other photographers photographers need to do is to be able to go to the bride and say, you know what, I'm going to walk into the bridal suite. I'm going to find the very best, most flattering, even photogenic light. And I'm going to do majority of our photos right there because that's going to produce ultimately what you want in your gallery. All right. So it applies to portrait locations. So let's say you're shooting on this amazing farm, right? And there's a fence post and there's a tree lined driveway and there's a beautiful barn and there's horses in the background. But out of all those different options, only one location has really great diffuse light, access to the sky that's gonna produce really beautiful backlighting and create really great easy editing. If there's only one location that produces all those things, that's the only location you should shoot in. If you wanna get some other locations you know, built into their gallery, then maybe wait until dusk where the light is even and nothing is intense. Pretty things do not equal oh man, we have to include that. A lot of people don't understand that. A lot of clients don't understand that. But as professional photographers, we've got to know the difference between recognizing pretty things and pretty light. So this applies also to ceremonies and to receptions. So at ceremonies, sometimes you have like a harsh light situation, but you find that if you go over to the side and the groom has a little bit of backlighting and you shoot there, it's actually really beautiful. Well, it's great. How much can you shoot there? Stay there as long as humanly possible. Get some of the groom, get some of the parents from that angle, get some of the bridesmaids from that angle, get some detail shots of the bouquets from that angle, shoot a wider shot of everyone standing at the front of the altar from that angle. Use that location as much as possible. Now at a reception, you could be just, you know, one or two weddings in, you're not great with all camera flash. And so you're just not really good at creating all these perfect lighting scenarios around the whole room, but you find, maybe you find one spot where you're next to a neutral colored wall and you're bouncing that light off and it's really working well. Stay there as long as possible. Shoot from that location as long as possible. We were literally, Ty and I just filmed a wedding, well he filmed, I was photographing a wedding last night and um, we loved, it was beautiful. He found a really great spot to film on the dance floor and he just set up shop right there. Why? Because it was worth it. He found good light and that trumped all the other pretty things, right? So you wanna make sure you can see your client's face, right? You wanna make sure that you can actually get a good angle of what you're photographing. But from a standpoint of dancing or just party dancing and people are constantly moving around, sometimes it is better to stay where the good light is and wait for the subjects to roll your way. Just as true as it is to find great light and stay there, the opposite is also true, that if you are in a position where you set up camp, you know, you, you get your clients all set up in one spot and you start shooting and, and you're recognizing like you're not getting pretty, you're not getting good stuff. Um, 
that is a key moment where you can like think to yourself, all right, very subtly, you should make an adjustment to move on to somewhere else. Or you could change maybe your position, pay attention to like, why exactly is this not working? You could try to fix it very subtly. So they don't know like, oh man, I really screwed up this location. If you pick a spot and you think you have to stay in that spot, just because you already set everyone up, that is only going to be a disservice to you and your clients. All right. So if you are in a place where you picked bad lighting, um, and a bad setup, then get out of that as soon as possible, because you don't want to stay there for 20 minutes just because you already set it all up. Instead, take a few shots and then say, actually, let's, let's adjust a little bit. Let's turn this direction. Or actually, I like this, but I actually think it might be a little bit better, a little further down the road where it's a little bit more shade. So let's go ahead and move down that way, right? You're, you can be confident and also be trying to figure things out at the same time. It's kind of a, that's a whole nother video for another day, but I feel like I have mastered the art of hiding my insecurities during shoots because this stuff is hard. So if, if you're brand new and you're like, okay, well, how do I even find this good light? I literally could spend hours teaching you this, but two tips really quick. If you are indoors, for example, and you're in a bridal suite and there are no windows at all, just a lot of lamps or overhead lighting, the, without a pretty decent flash setup, you're not going to get good images in there. And if you're a natural light photographer like me, I don't want to do a pretty significant flash setup. I want natural light. So I would take that bride and find one window, whether it's in the foyer, whether it's opening up the front door of the house or getting ready in, I would find a way to get natural light. What I mean by that is if you're standing next to a window and the, the sun is literally like the rays are hitting you in the face, like that's not great light for a client to stand in. But if you're standing next to a window and this soft natural light, um, it's kind of like the window itself is in the shade. That that is a great, a great setup. That's a great spot to do all the bride getting ready, putting your earrings on, putting your bracelet on, having mom step in and do a little zip, have a bridesmaid or two come in. Like you want to find that one simple spot. If you are outside, another tip would be you want to find shade right? You want to find shade and want your clients to face their shadows because that means the harsh light of the sun is going to be hitting them on the backside of their head. Again, there's so many other resources that will help you with this. I have other videos about finding good light, but overall, this is a great concept to take and apply to your very next shoot. It will make a huge difference, especially if you are a beginner. If, if this was helpful for you, if you're a brand new photographer, um, I'm trying to rack my brain of like, what's the best resource for you? Honestly, what we recommend is KJ All Access, especially if you're getting thrown into the deep end of shooting weddings and you don't have much experience. Maybe a friend just booked you and like, hey, shoot my wedding. And you're like, what am I doing? You can watch me shoot weddings. You can learn from me shooting weddings. And if you don't want to invest because you have no income right now, there's a free trial option. You can watch as much as you can within a five day period. So that is linked below. That's a great resource for beginners. If you're a beginner and you are ready to dive in, like you want to learn, you want to take it seriously. Like lighting and location is the way to go. We have a link uh, for that below as well. If you are just getting into this realm and you're deciding if you want to be for professional or not, I have so many free resources. This entire channel is free resource. So make sure you continue to invest in yourself. And if you don't want to miss anything from me in the future, like, and subscribe, and I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.